So let's start working on some grades here. I'm going to go to the beginning of my uh, footage here. And one thing you probably want to do is you want to look at a few different items here. I want to look at the, the variety of shots that I have here. I have kind of a medium shot there of a dolly. I've got a, um, there's a full shot. And as I move in closer, I've got a close up. There's another medium. There's a tight close up. There's another medium. So I've got a lot of this, for this scene here, I've got a lot of similar shots uh, over the entirety of the scene. So a basic idea here with grading is, first of all, what some colorists will recommend is you right-click on one of these. This is a this is our medium shot here, and we kind of keep cutting back to some medium shots and wide shots and close-ups. But I'm mainly going to use this shot, this shot, and this shot as my main shots to grade the entire project, since a lot of these are similar shots here. So let's start working on the grade on this one. I'm going to bring up my scopes, and the shortcut for the scopes are Control Shift W. We'll, all, we'll bring your scopes up. You can also reach that under your workspace and bring up your video scopes here. But Control Shift W is the toggle for bringing those on and off. And on a Mac, it is Command Shift W. Now I'm going to grab this. I'm going to bring it up to my gallery area here, just kind of right there. This is a free-floating scope on an on a single screen. If you want, um, it really this is really built. Resolve is really built for a dual monitor workspace. Let's show you the different types of scopes that we've got here. We've got, first of all, waveform. We've got a parade, uh, our RGB parade. We've got vector scope, and we've got histogram. You pull one of these little tabs in, I'll show you the di different scopes that you can use. And also, within each scope, you have the little settings here to configure every scope. Like if you want to uh, work on your waveform where it's not showing your blended red, green, blue, and your Y channel all mixed together, you can click on this little tab here, and you can tell it just to show the Y there, which is the dark levels of the waveform, and this really just shows your brightness levels and tone in your shot. Tone basically means your darks, your mids, your highlights, and it's not necessarily referencing color like red, green, blue. And what a waveform does is it represents your image from left to right. This is actually not the American version here. The American version goes from 0 to 100 IRE, which is the International Radio Institute standard. Uh, this is a little bit different scale here that's going from 0 to, uh, to 1023. This has to do with bits of information here, and 0 is where your dark level where your uh, details disappear in the darks and 1023 is where your details disappear in the highlights and the whites and this represents your image from left to right if you look at your image here so go from left to right you'll notice we've got uh, varying levels of mids here are your mid your, this is kind of your midline right there this is your mid exposure line right there and as we go up you'll notice we get a spike and a white and that's actually the window right there what your RGB Prey does is it takes takes your separate red channel, green channel, and blue channel and creates a waveform out of it from left to right. There's your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel. And you can actually tell by looking at your RGB. You can actually tell from your RGB channels here that you this image has a higher push in the reds and greens than it does the blue. The blue is a little bit lower than the red and green. And you can really tell down here on your histogram. Histogram, this is a brightness level. you got zero to 100. This is basically like an IRE scale here where you can see, and this is a constant concentration of pixels, you have a heavy concentration of pixels that are around 30 or 40 uh, IRE. And this is basically your main exposure probably for the face here because we've got a really heavy concentration of pixels right there and then as it goes down we've got a little spike of red at the end which is the window and notice the spike of the, the light coming through the window has a heavier push in blue. The 100 is where your details disappear in the white zero is where your details disappear in the darks. And then this is your vector scope. The vector scope is a, an image that shows saturation and it shows the saturation limits red, green, and blue, your red, green, blue channels, and then in between you got your yellow, magenta, and cyan. Down here you see that reflected on these wheels. See red up here, red up here, green down here, green down here, and so on. And then this shows how much saturation you have in those areas. Right now, if we look at our vector scope, we're seeing that we have a heavy, heavier saturation. This isn't really heavy, but we have more of a push into the, into the red area than we do anywhere else on the scale. And if we really want to get a good view of this here, we can click on here and we can pull our vector scope intensity up. It'll show this in stronger contrast. You can really see this has a heavier push toward the red and some spikes up toward the red. And has a little teeny push toward the blue there, which is probably just that, that window up in the corner. And this really represents, what this here represents is saturation. In the middle point here, this is desaturated, and as you grow out, these are your kind of saturation limit points. You don't want to go beyond those squares there. And you can tell this window to show an individual uh, scope, which will have more room and more detail and more control on, by just simply going up to this here. You've got a single window, dual window, or four scope window here. And if you're going to be doing, uh, normally you'll probably be doing one or two. So I'm going to put on just one scope there. And I'm going to move this up here to this corner. 
gonna size this down a little bit more and put it about right there and I'll use it over my val my gallery right now since I'm on a single window space so let's start doing some color grading on this and first we're gonna the very first step of color grading is to work on tone and that's basically your darks your mids which is your exposure and your highlights so there are two kind of major ways here that we can affect our tone. There's a few different tools, but the, these are two of the major ways here. We've got, uh, first of all, when you're color correcting, you're going to want to bring your dark levels. You, you don't want to necessarily crush your details and crush your dark levels. There's a better way to get contrast than to just crush your dark levels. The contrast is defined as the spread between the darkest parts of your image and the, and the brightest parts of your image. The further they are apart, uh, the more contrast you have. And what happens as an image, well, let's show you. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to drag it down to the left. And notice on my waveform there that my uh, darks are going down. The darker areas of my image are, are going down to the bottom and crushing here at the bottom. And now as we grab gain and drag that up, this is what we get. We get contrast. Look at the before and after here. I'm going to hit Alt F which makes this thing bigger. Uh, that makes this image a little bit bigger. We can get back out of that by doing Alt F or Option F on a Mac. So Alt F, shortcut for turning off a grade is uh, kind of doing before and after is Shift D. Shift D as in Doug I guess, uh, well disable will disable the grade. Shift D to, to re-enable it. So look at the before and after. There's the before, kind of flatter image. Your waveform is kind of pulled together. Shift D, this is spread apart and you get more contrast. And look at the difference between the image there. Alt F to go back to this uh, so we can see our node editor over here. And, uh, and I'm going to actually reset this node here. Think of your home key as bringing everything back to home. It's like, it's like uh, and that's to reset something. And the way we reset a grade, now this what I've done here is, that it is set that grade onto this node right here and you can see it's added a little icon right there that demonstrates that this now has a grade on it. Control Home will reset, if you have several different nodes, will reset the entire grade on this entire clip. We set it back to default. So, and, uh, and Shift Home will just reset a specific node. If I do Shift Home, right now it's doing the same as if I hit Control Home because I only have one node. But Shift Home will, will reset a node Control Home will reset the entire grade if you have several different nodes. So now this shot is back to normal here and as we move through this shot here I notice there are some segments of the shot as it's down low I notice that the uh, that the darks are kind of crushing here on the bottom. I'm going to grab that and lift that up and pull up my lift so I don't get those darks quite touching zero here and crushing my details and restore a little bit of that detail. Now your gamma is going to be used here to fix your midtones. First of all I'm going to look at my highlights and decide where my highlights. These windows are supposed to be blown out here to get rid of the detail outside so I am going to bring up my highlights. Usually you'll make sure that your highlights aren't crushed but this I do want my highlights kind of peaking so I'm going to grab my gain turn that up until that is just barely touching the very top there. And that's going to blow out the detail in the window, which is what I want right now. And now my gamma, kind of look at this as like my exposure. I'm going to turn down my exposure and get this exactly where I want that exposure to be. Right about there. And that is the first step of color grading, is just fixing the overall tone of the shot. And I did that by adjusting the darks. I'm going to bring my darks down a little bit more right there. My, um, my mid-tones and my highlights. Once again, offset will control this whole thing. We'll move that all up and down all at once. You can see what's happening on the waveform there. So next, let's work on color here. I'm going to go up to my waveform. I'm going to change this to my Parade. I'm going to change this to my Parade, my RGB Parade. And look at my red channel, green channel, blue channel. Or another way of doing this is looking at our histogram as well. But I can tell by this that I've got a higher push in the red and a and a lower and a suppressed blue channel. But my green and red are a little bit higher. So one way of adjusting that is you can simply go to these areas here. You can see that I've got kind of uh, down in the darks. In the dark regions, I've got more blue. I can actually go down and grab my dark area here. And since my blue is suppressed, I'm going to grab this and start dragging it toward the blue here. And notice how it is bringing the blue up in the darker areas. And now look at our image. Let me do Shift D, which turns our grade on and off. Shift D, there's before, there's after. The before shot, this looks a little too warm. And now this looks more balanced here. They were getting more of a balanced shot. Another way you can do that is also look at your histogram. Your color histogram shows us on kind of a different way here, but you can get really specific and say, okay, I've got a blue push in this highlight over here from that, and that's fine because I want my outside light to look a little more blue, and a little push in the green and blue and then red. But now look at the shot before and after. 
right here, notice the blue is suppressed, the red channel is dominant, and the green channel is kind of in between there. And then afterwards, we've got these kind of in parity here, and they're looking very similar, and our shot is color balanced as a result. So that is basically your second step. You usually want to fix your tone, then you want to adjust the color balance of your, of your shot, get that uh, fairly balanced, and then we can move on to the next step. And the next step is really going to be contrast. Right now, I've done those color grades here, the tone grades, the, the darks, the highlights, the, the mids, the basic adjustment, and my color adjustment, my balance, all on this node right here. Now if I want to do my curves on something different so I can kind of manipulate those individually, I'm going to add a node. And the way to add a node is you have a node selected, if you hit Alt S, it'll add a node after the node that you've been working on. So this is my first grade that I've done here. And this grade is going to be based on the grade that I did before, but now I can do separate change. I can do different changes on this. So this node contains those color grades that I did before, and this one's going to be my curve. I'm going to go click on my curve here, and to quickly explain curves, this is your black node. This is your highlight node. This corner up here is your absolute white uh, corner, and this is your absolute black corner. If you grab your darks, and this is going uh, going across this is your mids on up to your highlights from your dark on up to your highlights. As you grab this and drag it over, actually let's bring up our, our waveform and show you what's happening here. As we dra drag this over, notice what's happening to the dark areas of our image. And you drag this all the way over to the dark side here, it just brings everything down and just squishes it to death down in the dark corner there. I'm just going to right click on this node, I'm just going to grab this node, drag it back, and now this is your highlight, and once again this is your white, so watch what happens as you slide this up, it's boosting my darks. So this brings them down, and this boosts them. Highlights the same. I grab this, this increases the highlights, boosts them up, and if I bring it down, it boosts them down. And there you go. And these will only let you, these two nodes will only let you stay on the edges right here. You can simply add nodes. You can go up and say, I want to control a little bit above the blacks. I want to control my just little brighter dark areas here by clicking and adding a node. You can grab this node now, and once again, you drag it down toward this corner. It's going to darken those. If you drag them up toward this corner, it's going to brighten them. What they usually do to get contrast is we create what's called an S-curve. I click on this bottom here toward the darks, and this is going to help us create contrast without destroying our image. I'm going to drag this over, and notice the bottom section of this starts moving down. That makes it darker, and I'm going to go up to the mids around the face area here. And I want to bring up the brightness levels in the face, so I can actually just move my mouse right up above the face and click on kind of a mid-tone region of the face here. Click and it will add a node for me where that face is. It's right there, and I'm going to grab that. And notice when I move this over, it brightens up her face. But these are so close to each other, it's going to really destroy the image. It's going to kind of rip it apart. So I can actually, I'm going to right click, which will delete that node. I'm going to move up a little bit and click and move that over. And boom, we get contrast. Look at this. It starts bringing down the darks while stretching up the highlights. And look at look at the stretch that happens. See how much that stretches? And the more you stretch that, the more contrast you get. The more contrast you get, look at the image, what's happening here. Shift D before and after. Let's hit Alt F and take a look at, a little bit closer. Look at that. If you want to go absolute full screen, you hit Control or Command F. And it goes full screen. You can play back your video clip by pressing play. And it plays it back as best it can. And then you stop, and let's go back. Hit Control F to go back. Alt F to get that back to the small window. There we go. But yeah, if you take your little, uh, if you take your mouse over this and click on the image somewhere, it'll add a node on that level of your highlights, your mids, your darks. It'll put a node wherever you put your qualifier there. So I'm gonna right click and delete that one. And this is an S curve here, and we create contrast by starting to bring, and this way we're not destroying our darks. The darks stay where they are and the highlights stay where they are, but we're making the image brighter up on this upper end and darker down this lower end, and it creates contrast. I'm not gonna make that so extreme. Let's just make a basic curve here and just add a little bit of contrast to this. There we go, and this is starting to get a little bit more cinematic as a result. Shift D before and after. I hit Control S and save this, Command S on a Mac. 